All right, I'm going to go through a little bit of the test uh, and show you guys how to use some of the basic features of UT3 and kind of give you an example of how to navigate around with some of the data that you have. All right, so as an example, um, I am going to look specifically at <clears throat> the Blair Road building. Um, so I'll take this example. All right, so like we said the other day, you guys need to download this entire uh, Google Drive folder that's been shared with you um, specifically because when you open up the UT3 files it will look for things it will it will essentially look for a data points folder a chart templates and analysis files you may find that some of these are blank there's nothing in them all right but but the issue is if this folder is not here it will have a problem once, once UT3 is created, what's called an analysis or a chart, it saves them in these folders. And it's, it's set up to save them in those folders. So if those folders aren't there, it's a problem. All right. Now, what I need to do ultimately is open up this file, the U3P file. So I'm going to do that. So from in UT3, open, and I'm going to navigate to where that folder is, so Blair Road, and I open that U3P file, and there it is. Okay, now it's open. All right, now, what do I have here? I've got a couple of things at, at my disposal that I see over in this column. Um, it lists sources, channels, tools, charts, and analyses. We're going to focus ourselves on charts, okay? So what I'm going to do specifically here is I want to I want to plot some of the data, okay? Before I do that though, what I want to do is I want to get just sort of familiar with what's here. So I'm going to go over to channels, okay? Channels lists all of the data that we have for this building. All right? And so it lists basically every trend. So if I go through here, you can see that there's quite a few um, channels that are there. So let's let's kind of dive in a little bit. Um, if I want to understand what I have, I can first of all, one thing I can do is I can filter down on these channels and just see certain things. So if, let's just say I want to look at the rooftop units for this building, okay? So I type in RTU, and that got rid of all of the VAVs, right? So I can see from there that that sort of narrowed it down to just information about the uh, rooftop unit. All right, so that's, that's one useful thing I can do. If I want to look at things about, let's say, the VAVs, all right, I can type in, so VAV, everything's on the second floor, so I can say VAV2, and that's narrowed it down to all of the information about the VAVs on the second floor. Now, um, looking at these, if I really want to get an understanding, I go over into the same folder that we looked at at the beginning. And remember, I've got this naming key here. So let's open up the naming key. Okay. All right. The naming key here. All right. And I want to look at the names of some of the critical uh, things that I have. So the VAVs, that's the zone level trends, right? So here I can see that supposedly, or expand this out, I guess. Supposedly, what we have zone temperature is recorded in something called space temperature active channel one. Box damper position is listed as air valve position. All right, occupancy mode, occupancy tracer, airflow as airflow active. All right, and discharge air temperature is listed like so. So let's take a quick look here at how I would see that here. All right. So zone temperature. So let's say I want to look at I want to look at one particular zone 
if I say VAV2-1 and let me see. Two dash one. One thing you'll notice when I do something like two dash one is it's listing a lot right here. You see it's actually getting down to two dash ten. Essentially what's what's going on is unless I type in something more specific afterwards, okay, it doesn't filter down much more than that. So I probably have everything from 10 upwards towards 19 right there, okay? So there's quite a, quite a bit of sort of additional information there. Now, um, one thing to do before you go too far into this, like I said, it's important to kind of get yourself familiar with this. One of the folders that I said, where I jump ahead, was we also have the screenshots folder, which we talked about in your meeting the other day. For this particular building, I see that I've got screenshots of, of the second floor and I have data on the second floor. So what, what I see here is I can see the locations of these boxes. So for instance, over here, second floor section A, I can see VAV2-1 over in the corner here. And I see information about VAV2-1 here, all right? Now, one thing I notice when I go into here is I see VAV2-1, and then I see this VAV2-1 CMC, and then VAV2-1 again. What's actually happening in this particular building is, so I see second floor section A and second floor section B. If I look carefully at this guy, what I see is in section B, I see a VAV2-1 here along this perimeter on the upper side, right, where I'm highlighting. I also see that I got a VAV2-1 down in this corner in section A, all right? Uh, so clearly there are two VAVs um, named 2-1. I am not particularly sure which one is which. And so for that reason, uh, I know one of them must be one of them must be just the straight VAV2-1. The other one is VAV2-1 CMC. All right, so let's try to filter that down. So let's just say I say CMC like this, okay? Now, if I compare this to what I've got in the uh, zone level trend data, let me make that a little bit smaller so we can see them both here. Okay, so a couple of things you can see. There's there's only one, two, three, four, five trends that are called out specifically here in the naming key. But you'll see that there's there's a few more over here. All right, that's that's okay. We 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 basically highlighted in the the naming key the ones we thought were really the most important for you. There's certainly no reason why you can't look at some of the other ones. So. Let's um, let's do that. Let me go to uh, create a chart. Okay, so I go to charts, click on the charts folder. Now one chart's already been created. I'm going to create a new one. So what I do is I right click, and I get this menu, and then I say new line chart. I'm going to give that chart a name, okay? So to name that chart, I see there's this chart properties down here. So I go to name, and I'm going to call this uh, VAV 2-1 CMC trends, okay? Now you see the name has changed here. So now I'm going to double click on that, and it opens up and says no data available. Now what I want to do is start populating it with some data. So I go back to my channels uh, uh, section, I guess. And again, I filtered this down so it's VAV 2-1 CMC. And let's say I want to look at a couple of things. Um, one thing that might be interesting, let's look at Airflow Active. Okay. And I will look at Airflow Active. 
Yeah, okay, Airflow Active. So, all right, what am I looking at here? Basically what this is telling me is I can see the actual airflow into that zone over that period of time. Now, it's a little bit hard to tell when that is. I've got one date right here, October 22nd, 2017 at 10 a.m. But I'm gonna guess that I've got a couple of days of data. Now, if I wanna verify that, uh, what I want to do is I want to be able to sort of modify this graph a little bit. So let me write. So here's what I'm going to do. I, I go to the X axis and I right click on the X axis and go down to properties. Okay. Now on the properties side here. Okay. So I can see a couple of things that I can change minimum and maximum. So this is the scale over here. So step minimum and maximum. Minimum and maximum are set to auto. So basically what this means is start from wherever the data starts, end wherever the data ends, and make your step auto. I'm going to change that to 1, which should make that individual days. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the text vertical. All right, so the labels will be vertical and then apply. Okay, so now, and I can change that around more if I want. It's very easy to resize this so I can make this a little bigger. So right now, this looks really tiny on Windows 10, but you can see I'm putting my mouse over this bar right here. I'm gonna pull this bar over, and pull this bar down. Okay, and now I can sort of see better sort of what's going on. So. What, I, what I'm looking at here is, is, is just to remind ourselves, I can see down here which channel. This is the airflow. So the units here are, are cubic feet per minute, CFM. And I can see the 12 a.m. marks. This is the, so here's the 18th. All right, here's the 19th, here's the 20th. Okay, and then basically here's the, the 21st, 22nd. All right, so I can see a couple of things kind of going on there. Um, Let's let's say I want to look at a couple of trends simultaneously. So I'm looking at the airflow. The other thing that might be useful probably is to look at something like the air valve position. So again, what I notice what I do is I, I highlight these trends and then I, I just drag them over to the graph and then they appear. Let me also do, I'll do discharge air temperature. Okay and I will do space temperature. All right, now, immediately what you can see is, okay, sure, I see everything there, but one of the problems I see with the graph that I have, one of the things that I really don't like about this graph is I've got four different things that all are on different scales. And sometimes that's, that makes it kind of hard to figure out exactly what's going on, right? So let me see if what we can do is create a couple of graphs. Okay, so I click on my chart, okay? So I, I wanna point out something that I just did. So, I, so when I'm on channels right here, so I just clicked on the channels section. If you look in this properties section over here, there's nothing. Let me click on the graph again. Now in this properties section, it talks about chart properties, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down into this chart section where it says panes and in collection, I'm gonna, I'm gonna left click on this set of three dots right here. And I'm gonna add a pane, okay? So now I've got my primary pane and pane one. So what's appeared here, the primary pane is this one on top, pane one or pane zero one is this one down here. So I'm gonna click okay. Now what I wanna do is I wanna move some things onto this pane. So why don't I do this? I'll go to um, air valve position. Let's see, which ones do I want to move? I'm going to move the temperatures, let's say. So I'm going to click discharge air temperature. Okay. And I so on the properties, notice, okay, so as I move from the graph, so now I'm clicked on the graph and I see over here chart properties. Now I click on specifically this channel, CMC discharge air temp channel one, and I see chart trace properties. All right, so these are the properties specifically for the discharge air temperature channel. And what I'm gonna do is I go to pane, 
and I change from primary to pane one. And there's the discharge air temperature now in pane one underneath of it, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing. So space temperature, so it's, its properties, I go over and I ch change pane from primary to pane one, okay? And so what I can see here is the space temperatures, all right, and the discharge air temperatures, all right, to go with it, all right? Um, and I might possibly, depending on what I wanna see, I might say, okay, properties, well, I might add another pane, okay? So let's say I wanna do that. I click on chart, so I right click, or I just click on the chart area. Okay, go to chart properties, panes, click on this set of circles, add another pane. Now click on the air valve, and then the properties appear over here. Change the pane to pane two. Okay, and now I can see everything in sort of its own, its own place. And then I can sort of expand this out, all right, to kind of look at things more carefully. Now, if I want to see specifically, you know, what's happening during what periods of time, um, one thing I can do is if I hover over the graph, okay? So if I hover right there, I can see that, that time is approximately 6 a.m., all right? And, you know, I can see this time right here, 7.15, okay? So one of the things that we, you know, we... Um, talked about in, in your most of your meetings, I think, is looking at what happens in some of these spaces overnight. Does it appear like there's there's some setbacks in place? Okay, we'll kind of talk about that here in a little in a little bit, about how you can see some of that. All right. Now, one of the things that kind of jumps right off the bat when I look at this data, just for some insights, I can see that at midnight for some reason on the 21st, it would appear that the damper opens up I have actual airflow, which means there must be a fan running somewhere, and it doesn't turn off again until 12 a.m. on the 23rd. Now, if I go back to the calendar here, um, that seems a little bit strange. Midnight on the 21st, basically to midnight to the 22nd into the 23rd, means all weekend long, everything was essentially operating. Maybe that makes sense, um, but it probably doesn't. Okay, so that's something we'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, in class, you know, coming up. But I, those are the sorts of questions that you guys will, will be needing to answer. Now, one of the things that, that we want to do is to make nice sort of presentable graphics, ultimately, when we, we do our analysis with this. All right, now, to do that, there's, there's a number of different things that I can do. Um, the simplest way to deal with the graphics is I go copy to clipboard. And I'll usually do this as a meta file. What that does is that copied out this graph and I open up a PowerPoint file. Okay. And I will do a new slide. Let me not do it that way. I'm going to do insert new blank slide. So it's completely blank. And then I copy and paste in. I just do a control V and paste this graph in here. Okay. Now, that's nice and big, and I can read that relatively clearly. All right. Let's now create this as a new image. So what I want to do is get rid of I want to get rid of these uh, sort of weird you know labels for this guy so I'm going to create essentially a box that covers that up and just format that so that there's no line and it has a white fill and copy that and cover over that 
sort of weird one as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this is airflow CFM rotate that 90 degrees Okay, you get the idea All right. for this one it's damper percent I'll call it damper position I guess in units of percent let me I'm going to center that and move it there and then I say discharge air temperature and zone air temperature in degrees F okay and place that there okay I find that's sort of the easiest way to, to deal with these things. One thing I might do, um, what, you know, so if we're putting this into a Word document or something like that, we may ultimately end up finding um, that some of these um, fonts down here are too small. If that's the case, I can sort of right click on this, go to properties. Um, if I right click on these yeah so right click on the on the x-axis go to font um, maybe just up this to 11 same thing over here properties oops right click on this side font 11 and you'd have to do that for each pane. So right click next to the Y axis, 11. Right click here, font, 11. And then I can, I can just again copy and paste that and, and deal, with, deal with things as need, as need be. So it's, you know, it's, it's relatively straightforward to be able to manipulate some of the data and to do some of the basic analysis. Um, I don't think you guys will, will have too much trouble with that process. Um, so, you know, there'll be questions, I think, as, as we go through it. Um, one thing is, you know, I will say this. I mean, we will end up putting these into Word documents. When you do that, basically select all of it, right-click, group, all of that. Now, if I want to put this into Word, let me open up a Word document. And let me copy. When I bring this into Word, I can do paste. That's why. So I basically right click in Word and then I do paste as picture. Now it's turned all of that into one picture. All right. It is much easier, and, I, and I'm going to require you to deal with this in that way. Um, if you don't, if pasting this stuff into, into PowerPoint, so that you can assemble it all into one sort of meaningful image and then pasting it into Word is really the effective way to deal with it. Now you can see now some of this font, some of these fonts are a little bit small, right? And that's part of the reason why I increase these, these font sizes here. All right. And then we can kind of deal with that a little bit, a little bit better. Now, if ever I want to add stuff to these things, I always can. Right, let's say I wanted to add stuff from VAV 2-1. So I throw in information from VAV 2-1 and it would appear from VAV 2-1 that what happened is it always drops into the primary pane. If I want to move this somewhere, I certainly can. All right, so that's something I probably need to, to ultimately take a look at, you know, at some point, you know, in the future as to what exactly or how exactly I, um, uh, manipulate these and, and control these. So if I want to move that guy around, 
let's say I wanted to move into another pane. I click on the one I just added and I say, move it to pane two. And there it is now on pane two. Okay. Now, one thing with UT3, if I close this thing, um, this graph stays saved. You'll notice there, there's a save as, but no save. It saves all of the changes that you make. Okay. In other words, I, as, if I make a new graph, that graph is saved. Unless I delete that graph myself, that graph is going to be there the next time I open it, everything. All right. So let me do this. Let me exit. And let me open Universal Translator again. And then let me open that file. Okay. And go to charts. You see that those the charts that we just created are still here. All right. So that's that's probably not surprising. Um, if I want to get rid of, let's say this, so I noticed that I did this for VAV 2-1, which is different than VAV 2-1 CMC. Let me hit delete. So I hit the delete key on my computer and that guy's gone, okay? Now I want to make a new line chart here and I go down to my properties. I want to name that, let's see, I don't know, schedule check okay so then I go ahead and open this thing called schedule check again it's blank and we talked about you know trying to I think with all of you guys trying to verify what the schedule for the building looked like because I could see from this the schedule looks kind of funny to me the fact that I see something starting at midnight and basically running for 48 hours straight strikes me as a little bit strange. All right, but that's for one zone. Let's see what's happening for the whole building. So I have this graph I call schedule check. Well, let me go back to my AHU trends. So I've got discharge air temperature, duct pressure. Duct pressure is probably one of the best things that I can look at. So let's go to duct pressure. So I go open the channels. And I do RTU to get to the RTU information. And over here, duct pressure active. All right, duct pressure active. So I could type that here, I guess. So what did it, it was called? R -E RTU. Um, well, I guess I can see it right here, duct pressure active. Drag and drop it in. Okay. All right, and that's telling me a lot right off the bat. All right. Um, I can see a couple of things with that. I may also ultimately want to take a look at what's going on with the fan uh, speed and, and such. But I can see a lot. looks like this guy operates... Um, quite a bit so he does pretty much operate it looks like for 24 hours over the weekend but to see things a little bit clearer let me do change the properties again so i right click here on the x-axis i go to properties change my step size to one again and then i'm going to put the text vertical and hit apply all right one other thing i can do which is sometimes easy is i, know I hit interlaced here so what that does is it now highlights in blue for me different, basically between each, each tick line. That makes it a little bit easier to see. Now, one thing you'll notice here, if I hover on the data, it's saying that value is two. And it's saying that value is two. So it's really hard to tell what exactly I'm looking at. So if I now hover on the Y axis and I right click, and go to properties. Oh, not that. Sorry, right right click here. Yeah, go to properties. There's the decimals 
here. So I, so I hovered over, just to be clear about that, I hovered over the y-axis, went to properties, and take decimals to two. Now what it's done is I can see this value looks like it's at 1.5. This one looks like it's at 1.88. This one looks like it's at 1.95. All right, so a couple of things I can see about this. Looks like this guy, everything starts up here on this day at 6 a.m. Here's 6 a.m. Here it ended at, looks like about 8 p.m. Here at about 8 p.m. Here at about, looks like 7.15 or so. Yeah, this guy's done by 7.15, but then he's back up by midnight for whatever reason, all right? And it's kind of unclear exactly what's going on. This, the pressure drops. I think I have a fan speed for this one. So this one is called, um, if we look at it, supply fan speeds. So there's a supply fan status. That may just be a status, but it may be a speed. So let's bring that in. Um, what was that called? RTU-2 DAC supply fan status. Okay, here it is. Drag it over. All right, now notice that guy's on a totally different scale here. All right, he's on a different scale. So because of that, it makes it really hard to look at this data, right? So this is a good case where I want to create a pane. So what I do was I, I, click, on, I click on the chart. So I just click in the chart area, and then I see chart properties appear. And I go down to panes. Click here, add, I've got a new pane, I click OK, and then I go to supply fan status, the properties change over here, go to the chart, pane, pane one, and boom, there it is. All right, now one of the things, you know, that, that I notice here is that the supply fan would appear to max out around 91 ish percent somewhere around there um, one of the questions that i asked you guys is does it look like there's you know a static pressure uh, optimization kind of happening here i look at this one and excuse me i'm going to guess that there's really not much in the way of static pressure optimization kind of going on i do see the static pressure kind of bouncing around a little bit right but i don't see the fan really causing that it looks like what happens is the fan is kind of maxing out at some level now it's also possible when i see something like this where he looks like he's 86 the entire time when i see that kind of thing that very often in the context of the sorts of problems that we're looking at that's probably a data loss of some kind in other words, very often what happens when, when data is lost is systems continue to repeat the value that they've, they've had for a while. Um, so I, I see that, you know, there's, it's basically saying across this entire time, it's saying 86%. There may have been a data loss, and for whatever reason, it's just, it, it read something here, and it read something here, right? And it just, it's not, it's not changing its value for some reason. So I don't, I don't know that I would totally believe that it was 86%. It may be fluctuating. The bottom line is it looks like this fan sort of pegs out pretty close to its maximum. And then I see, you know, essentially the pressure kind of varying a little bit. My, my suspicion would be the reason this pressure is varying is because the fan's more or less at a constant speed and the dampers are opening and closing and that's just kind of changing the pressure in the ducts throughout the day. And one reason why I sort of think that is if I go back to, well, yeah, I don't need to go back to see this, I guess. If I, if I look at this, I see around 5.30 or so that the pressure begins to go up, but the fan's more or less still at the same speed. What that kind of tells me, I suspect, is people started to leave around 5.30, 5 o'clock, and what you see is, because people are leaving the building, 
the building doesn't have as much load anymore and the sun's going down a little bit. And so effectively what that's saying is the zones don't need as much airflow anymore. And so because they don't need airflow, the dampers are closing off and that's causing the pressure to build up inside the ducts. All right, so I can kind of see a little bit of, of activity sort of happening there. Now that may not be that may not be correct. I don't know. I don't know enough yet to be able to say much about this, but I can certainly tell that um, something seems a little bit off to me. But the critical thing for you guys really in this in this procedure in this process that you're in right now is to begin this analysis, to begin looking at this information, to begin you know comparing some of it to the to the screenshots that you see here to try to correlate where things may be in some of these images uh, and to begin to answer questions, you know, simple questions like, you know, what are the schedules and, and things like that. All right, so hopefully this, this kind of helps you to understand how to dive into that data. The other thing that's important is making that process of how I export data from, or export not data per se, but export these graphs. So copy, you know, again, typically as a meta file, copy as a meta file, Go over here, insert, new slide, blank, paste it in, resize it. And then, you know, from here, I can typically modify this thing in a, in a useful way um, that I, I can really be able to see and, and know what's what's happening. Okay. So again, this this should be the thing to get you started. And we'll talk more about it together when we're in class.